Greetings ladies and mental gents and welcome to this patch video for Thief Lord taken from the website Royal Road. In this video we will be doing chapters 53 and 54 and as always I hope that you enjoy and if you do please consider subscribing. Channel membership has also been enabled for the channel. If you wish to see more details click on the join button. Chapter 53 Reunion Oh god, that feels great. I groan as I stretch my body. Wow, I've been sitting still for so long. I think my skin may have merged with the machine if I stayed on for another hour or so. God, it doesn't feel great to walk around with my real body for a change. Three months, it has been over three months since I started my adventure. It's three months since I was a regular human being like everyone else. I've got to say though... I don't regret my new lifestyle one bit. Hell, I don't even remember what it feels like to be sleeping anymore. It's weird that I miss it. I lightly shake my head while a smile creeps onto my face. Maybe I miss it a little bit. Going to sleep used to be one of the best feelings in the world, but I'm not sure if I want to dedicate one third of my life to keep doing it. Staying hooked up on gaming capsule and playing instead of sleeping is way better feeling in the long run, and it feels like my life expectancy just increased by 30%. 30%. That's like living 30 to 40 years longer. Whoever said gaming wouldn't amount to anything. I chuckle at that thought. When they first announced the full immersion technology, I was saddened to hear that they never managed to create an artificial time dilation. Now, though, I don't really mind. The fact that the machine manages to artificially mimic sleeping while the person is hooked up to it is still conscious is probably the most incredible technological discovery since the invasion of hot showers. I feel like I got so much more out of life these days, and I wouldn't trade it for the world. It allows me to follow my dream after all. It's been three months since I completely flipped my life around. I quit my job, sold my apartment, and even broke up with my girlfriend just to be able to dedicate every single hour of my life to become a professional gamer. I gambled everything I have, everything that I've ever amounted to for the stream, and I've loved every second of it. Some would call me crazy for even considering doing what I've done, and they are probably not wrong. If they knew that I decided to gamble my entire life on playing a villainous character where I could lose everything I have worked for in the blink of an eye though, they would probably recommend I seek out professional help. Hell, even I struggle to believe what an idiot I've been. Still, I don't regret my choices, not even for one second. I feel more alive now than I ever have done before. Every choice I made matters, and there is nothing but hard work and dedication standing in my way of gaining everything that I have ever hoped for and dreamed for. I choose to follow the path of a villain, and I swear, I'll be the best damn villain the world has ever seen. My mind wanders into a state of unicorns and rainbows as I head to the bathroom to take care of my bodily functions. Grabbing a good long shower and relieving myself of two of the most delightful experiences that I have left of my life after I quit sleeping. Only beaten by the ecstasy of shoving a greasy bacon cheeseburger hand to my mouth. Which reminds me, maybe I can actually afford to eat a hamburger now that I finally run into a bit of cash. Do you know what? I think I might just do that. I quickly get dressed and swipe my keys off the kitchen counter before I head outside. The bright morning sun washes over my face and I let out a humid air sink into my skin. It must have been raining last night, but it's not as if I would have noticed. Things like this still weird me out after living in a completely different world for such a long time. I start my walk towards the diner that I met my dad in only a few days ago. Jesus, it feels like it was months ago. I definitely need to spend some more time offline. I'm turning into some sort of closet goblin. Speaking of, it's been a few days since I last heard from Dad. Perhaps I should give the old man a call. I fish my phone out of my pocket and hit two on the speed dial. The phone only rings twice before my dad picks up. Ryan, is that you? Damn kid, I can't remember the last time you called. Are you dying? My dad grunts on the other side. Ha, ha. Very funny, Dad. It's not been that long since I last called. That long? I'm pretty sure Trump III was still president the last time I heard from you. 
You know why I'm worried, right? He says mockingly. He's up on the dad joke, Scramps. Can't a loving son call and invite his old jailer out for a cheese and bacon burger on a Thursday morning? A burger? It ain't in the morning. Yeah, is that a problem? No, I guess it isn't. Jimmy's diner in 20. Yeah, bring lots of cash. I'm hungry. Cheeky kid, buy your own damn breakfast. He huffs at annoyance before he hangs up, leaving me grinning. We have a lot in common, my dad and I. I'm just better looking. Jimmy's diner is only ten minute walk from my apartment, so I decide to take the scenic route along the local canal. Well, more like a local garbage dump, but there are at least some trees and small park to look at. This is the kind of view that you get when you can only afford to rent an apartment from under 300 euros per month. It might not be flashy, but I hope I'll be able to rent something better in a few months if my luck holds. Eventually, they reach the diner, and I can already see Dad's car parked out front. The old man sure can move fast, especially when it's anything related to Jimmy's diner. I'm not sure what he loves more, bacon or my sister and I. Something tells me that I don't want to know the answer to that. A small bell rings as I push the door open and enter the time-worn little diner. Seems like I arrived in the middle of a morning rush so it takes a little bit of time to maneuver myself across the sea of middle-aged men with thinning hair and monstrous beer bellies. I eventually push my way over to my dad's regular booth, and I'm surprised to see that he is not alone. Hey, chubs, fancy meeting you here. A cheerful voice calls out from and she spots me. Ah, crap, what have I done to deserve this? Hey, sis, I sigh, how are you? She jumps to her feet and walks over towards me. How are you? Is that all you greet your favorite sister? Come here and greet me properly, chubs. She chuckles while embracing me tightly. I reluctantly return the hug, counting the seconds until the appropriate for me to push her off. My sister can be a little clingy at times. That, and I don't really like hugging people, even if it's family. Whoa, what's this? She says while measuring the midsection with her arms. You've lost some weight, chubs. Crap, now I've seen everything. Dad, are you sure that he isn't doing any drugs? No, my dad says while shaking his head solemnly. I can spot a traces of a smoke on his face, and I snort. Ah, frack off. Losing weight is a by-effect of being hooked up to the machine all day. It's kind of hard not to lose weight when I don't have food to distract me. Oh yeah, that old virtual reality coffin you worship more than dad worships bacon. I still can't believe that when dad told me you quit your job to live inside that thing. Like, I thought, what's the worst thing that could happen? Terminally ill patients and infants pretty much live like vegetables already, so what's adding more healthy 28-year-old man into the demographic? She snorts, giving me a dry look. It seems like the consequences were far bigger than I would have ever imagined. If you continue to lose more weight, then I'll have to stop calling you chubs. He affects me too much, you know. It's completely irresponsible for you to make this decision without consulting me first. Yeah, you have a rough, sis. I shake my head. You could always go back to using my real name, you know. Psst, hardly. I'll just come up with something new. Don't you worry. There are tons of potential nicknames for a kid like you out there. I'll just have to go through the careful selection process. Don't worry. I won't even charge you for the work. What would you do without the generous older sister, eh? Gee, I don't know. Probably live a perfectly normal life for a change. Ha! Huh. Funny as always, little man. You'd be bored to death before you even hit puberty. Now come sit the skinny rear down so that we can eat. She chuckles jovially before finally releasing me from her grip. A smile crawls onto the lips and I sit down in the booth opposite my dad. My sister scoots in beside me, resting her eyes on the side of my face. I ignore her the best of my ability. A waitress soon comes along and takes our orders my sister choosing a salad while going on a long rant about eating healthy when my dad and I select a bacon and cheeseburger. We nod along seriously for a moment and promise to choose a salad next time, which is a promise neither of us are planning on keeping. Same as always. So why are you here, sis? I mean, not that it isn't nice to have you here. She raises an eyebrow. I came because dad called. We're worried about you, Ryan. I slumped back in my seat. Of course, that's why she came. I should have known. Dad, I thought we talked about this. My dad, who has been quiet so far, grunts. We did, son, but I called her a few days before our talk and she'd already ordered a ticket. 
I still don't agree with your choice, but it's your choice to make. Your sister, she cuts in, your sister thinks that you're being an idiot and too brain damaged to know what's best for you. Therefore, I got on the first plane that I could to come up here and beat some sense into you. I sigh. I don't want to explain myself again, Alison. Well, you ain't getting out of this booth until you do, so talk before I make you talk. I massage the bridge of my nose, taking a good long sip of my milkshake in the process. I'm following my dream, Alison, same as you did when you decided to move to London to become a doctor. She gives me a deadpan look. Do you seriously want to compare getting a medical degree with a well-paying job and rotting away in a metal coffin all day to play a video game? Seriously. I'm not rotting away. I'm in better shape now than I've ever been. Happier too. You can't live off a game, Ryan. You need a proper job, like the one you had. I can live off this game, and I will. My last job sucked every single ounce of life out of me. I don't want to spend the rest of my life locked inside a cubicle. There are other jobs. None that can bring me the fraction of happiness I feel when playing this game. I've made up my mind, and you can't change it, Alison. She starts to gently massage her temples. You still can't live off the game, Ryan. What are you going to do when your money runs out? Rob a bank. I release a sigh. Why does everyone have to be so damn condescending about dedicating my life to become a professional gamer? If I told them that I wanted to dedicate my life to become a professional tennis player, they would have praised me on the seven howls and back. Why is becoming a professional gamer that much worse? Hell, I'd say it's easier to become a rich off gaming than regular sports. They're strenuous too. I do well enough. I've already earned nearly 1,500 euros in a week, after taxes, and I'll have enough to pay rent for another month and a half. I'm doing just fine, don't worry about me. You've made that much already, my dad says, raising his eyebrows. Yeah, technically. What do you mean, technically, Madison said. Well, almost all of it is in-game items and material. I would have to sell it first, but I estimate the value to be around that level. So technically, you have nothing. I close my eyes and slowly count to ten. I only get to six when my sister speaks again. I have to say, little brother, I don't like this one, but it's not like you to be this stupid. Are you sure that you're not in some sort of trouble? You owe someone any money, and I'm sure that I can give you a loan. I keep telling you, my finances are just fine. How could they be? I've heard about the game. It costs 300 euros per month just to play it. And that's not considering the mountains of money you have to invest in the game to pay for equipment and materials for your character. I read an article that hardcore player can only make six to seven hundred euro profit per month this way and that demands you spend at least sixteen hours per day in game. How long can you keep it up? That's not enough to live a decent life. I swear, I would have lent you the money already if I hadn't been because you would probably just spend it to prolong that foolish venture of yours. I slam my fist into the table, startling my sister and several of the nearby guests who throw curious glances in my direction. For the last time, Madison, I neither want nor need your pity money. What sort of man would accept it? What I decide to do with my life is none of your concern, and I will struggle through it with my own efforts, or fail trying. My dad sits quietly through the entire argument, crossing his arms and closing his eyes. My sister doesn't see it, but I notice a single nod of approval after hearing my words. My anger abates slightly after seeing his nod. At least I have someone supporting me, even if he is a spineless wimp when it comes to my sister. My sister, however, is fuming. You cheeky little bastard! I only want what's best for you. She moves her glare over to our dad. Aren't you going to say something here? My dad grunts once before he opens his eyes. I told you earlier, Allison. Your brother has already made up his mind. I will support his decision for as long as he needs me to, and I'll be there to pick him up if he fails, just like I would for you if you were in a similar situation. Why don't we give him some time to prove himself first? Cheeks reddened, Alison glares at our dad for a moment before she leans back in her chair, crossing her arms. You two are the most pig-headed people that I've ever known, she huffs. I have no idea how Mom ever managed to keep the two of you from killing yourselves from your own stupidity. Please don't bring Mom into this, I say, shaking my head. My dad is still like a statue, his eyes once more closed. Why shouldn't I? I'm getting sick of seeing you two rot away in denial. She is dead, and she ain't coming back. 
Pretending like she doesn't exist won't make your memories go away. She had her faults, but damn if we don't all love her. It's time that you two could at least hold a single conversation about her without shutting yourselves off. You owe her that much. Hell, you owe me that much, she says, her face reddening further. I release a deep breath. We know, Alison. It's just hard. We will get there eventually. We just need a little more time, I say, and Dad grunts in agreement. Alison snorts. See? That you do, and don't you think the one second that I let you off the hook for gaming things of yours? Don't think you ever would, I mutter, shaking my head. We sit in silence for a few minutes until the waitress arrives with our food. I almost forgot where we were. It's starting to become a bad habit that my family and I seem to solve all our conflicts in public like this. I don't believe for one second that half of the diner isn't listening in on every word we say. If this keeps going on, we might have to stop coming here. Not that Dad would ever agree to that. The bacon they serve is just too damn tasty. We start devouring our food for a great fervor, which is a family trait that we are all known for. I don't know about you, but I don't think I've ever seen an entire group of people who can finish eating a large meal in under 30 seconds. We're just that amazing. Eating food also helps to lower the tension around the table. And even Allison ends up smiling after a few bites. So, Ryan, she says eventually, tell me a little about the game. What is it that makes it so great? Um, I take a moment to drink another sip of my milkshake. What do I tell her? That I make money by murdering and robbing innocent computer programs for a living. Sure, that would work out great with my dad. Which retired police officer wouldn't love to hearing that the only son is a digital mobster? It's an exciting and great scenery, I suppose. I say with an indifferent shrug. Great scenery? What kind of crap is that, she snorts. I bet it's something else, isn't it? A woman, perhaps. I choke on my milkshake. My cheeks go red. No. Oh ho! A glint shines in the corner of her eyes. I hit the mark right on, didn't I? Who is she? Is she pretty? There is no girl, I say a little bit too high-pitched. What the hell? Why am I even reacting like this? If she is half as pretty as your face seems to think she is, then I might have to steal her away from you. She says, giving me the best crap-eating grin. For the last time, there is no girl, and if there was, it's not like you would ever set foot in the game to find her. So there is a girl, she muses. I was just messing with you, but now I just have to see this. Huh? Oh, didn't Dad tell you? We both bought one of those capsules each. It's not like we have anything better to do when we're supposed to be sleeping. So we thought we might as well have a little family reunion on our newest place to work every day. She grins. My jaw drops. Please don't. Oh, but we will. Please take good care of us, little brother. Freck, my life. This can't end well. End of chapter. Chapter 54. Stirring the Antil. This is seriously not what I needed right now. I sigh as I walk back home. I don't really want to be that guy who starts whining about things. But when it comes to my family, I reserve the right to bitch a little bit. Sure, I love them and all, but having them trespassing on my online sanctuary is just as exhaustive on my psyche as it was to help my late grandmother with computer problems. One can only explain the oh so many ways about where she can find the send button on her email before you consider going postal. I rub the bridge of my nose while I try to come up with some sort of solution to this. There is always a workaround to things, and it shouldn't be too much of a strain on me. In fact, I bet there is some way of me to use them to my advantage. They can probably obtain information that I cannot, and I need see no reason not to use them at my distraction if I ever find myself in a sicky situation. Do I even want to know what they would do about finding about about my online profession? Well, I'm pretty sure that Allison wouldn't care, but my dad might... And if I can't tell Dad about it, I'm certain Allison would tell me just to spite me. And that could turn the real awkward, real fast. I'd rather postpone that particular conversation indefinitely. Anyway, that's a challenge for another day. It will probably take a pair a couple days to get their things together and log in. And then, it probably takes them a few nights just to get their bearings to figure out how the game works. They will probably pester me like crazy, 
but luckily for me, I can always fake being offline and say that I have things to take care of in real life. They might buy that lie for a few days. Should I feel bad about blowing them off? Nah. I considered lying when my sister asked which city I started out in. It would have been easy to tell my sister that I played in the city of Demoris on the northern side of the continent, but the lie wouldn't hold up for long. Sure, I would gain a couple more days of freedom until that figured out something else, but the two would probably just re-roll their characters and follow me to the correct city. And let me tell you this, it seriously isn't worth it to anger Ariston like that. That girl can be mean. Physically so. Siblings, am I right? I shake my thoughts of casually deceiving my family aside. I'm not sure if I should be worried about how easy it is for me to lie to everyone around me these days even my family. Is this the new thing, or have I always been like this? I don't think I used to be like this. Thinking about it is starting to give me a headache, though. So, I quickly fish my phone out of my pocket and hit up a few web pages to distract myself. After a few seconds of scrolling, I huff in surprise when I notice they just launched a major update to Ascendance Online. Patch Notes, version 1.68 Dear Players, Due to the massive decline in players opting to play as villain, as well as the path not living up to our vision of what it should be, we are introducing some major changes to the game's core mechanics. The changes are aimed towards increasing the benefits for villains and adventurers alike to actively engage in combat with one another. Change number one. Villains will now gain twice the amount of experience for killing an adventurer equivalent to the same level of experience they would gain from killing an NPC of similar levels. Maximum experience gain is capped to one level per kill. Change number two. Players killing a villain will gain all the experience the villain loses upon death divided amongst all the players involved in the kill. The total amount of experience gained is reduced by 10% per level of difference between the villain and the highest participating player's level if the villain is of a lower level. Change number three. Adventurers and craftsmen will now lose one level every time they die after reaching level 10. Change number four. Adventurers may instead of losing a level opt to drop the most valuable item in their inventory. There is no level appropriate items for the least rare quality. They will lose a level instead. Change number five. The experience may only be gained once per kill on an adventurer every 16 hours to prevent abuse. Adventurers and craftsmen will not lose an extra level during this time period if they are killed by the same villain. Villains are exempt from this change. We hope these changes will not inconvenience you, and we further urge you to stay strong, adventurers. Kind regards, Kyle R. Bennett, lead developer of Ascendance Unlimited. My eyes gloss over as I quickly read through the patch notes, followed by a closer and much more scrutinizing read-through. When I read through the third time, my jaw finally drops. It's a PvP patch. Oh, hell yes! My smile threatens to split my face in two as I make fist pumps in the air. This patch is going to make things a whole lot more interesting for me. PvP matches, or also known as player versus player patches, are designed to incentivize combat between players. In reality, this makes it very lucrative for me to start killing other players instead of mindless monsters beneath the city. Sure, this will alert other players to my presence, but it was always only a matter of time until my existence would become known anyway. This only slightly moves the schedule ahead. I don't mind the trade-off for these benefits, though. This could also be helpful in other ways. Currently, only 1,000 players have an active villain account, which means that there are virtually none of us around. It's become so bad, most regular players will probably walk about without ever encountering one of us. With the patch, though, it heaps and mounds of new players will flock to the path of a villain, and it'll only make it that much easier for me to hide a select few assassinations in the massive bloodbath that'll take place in the streets in the coming months. Hide a murder during a genocide and all of that. Should I be worried? Probably. In the end, I think this is a totally viewed worth it, at least now that I have sufficient power to escape the majority of players' mass and stay hidden if it comes down to it, it's not like I would do nothing but hunt players all day long, though. I still need to farm sewers for weapons, as well as perform all my jobs to gain new items and crafting regions. It's only a drop in the pond, but it is a much-cherished drop nonetheless.
Chuckling lowly to myself in anticipation, my eyes are drawn to the comments section of the patch note. My grin spreads even wider when I read the complete outrage on the gaming population. People are furious that they can now lose levels if they die. In my opinion, they were already getting it off pretty lightly, and risking to lose only one level isn't really the end of the world for regular players. The change is huge, and it'll definitely change most people's approach to the game for the long time going forward. This change probably won't even matter too much to higher level players, as they can opt to drop valuable items, which their party can just pick up for them afterwards anyway. It does, however, make things infinitely more interesting for us villains. If I could kill some inattentive high level player who has legendary grade items, I would be set for a long time. Oh man, that would really stir up an anthill. This could potentially be my main source of gaining experience going forward. I already know the sewers won't last me forever, and now that Greg and Kevin probably ratted me out, I needed to find a new hunting grounds anyway. This patch is beyond convenient, even though it isn't nearly as safe as grinding along the underground. With my recent skill acquisition and enormous size of the city, however, I'm more confident in my ability to hide and move around unseen. It doesn't hurt that I have a perfectly safe hideout to chill out in if things get too rough. I'm starting to really look forward to this bloodbath. The dim lights in my private quarters call me to blink twice as the consciousness is transferred back to my avatar. I take a deep breath, allowing the musky air to filter through my digital nose. I think these past few hours I've spent with my family is the longest period I've stayed outside the game since I started playing. For the first time in a long time though, I can finally release some tension that I've built up in the system for a while and truly relax. Things are really going well for me so far and I'm eager to get back to business. I jump to my feet and perform a few light stretches. It still feels a little odd playing as a character that's a head shorter than my real self, but it was surprisingly easy to get accustomed to my new anatomy. Life as a halfling is rough, but at least it's not visually displeasing like half the standard fantasy races out there. I wish that I could exchange some of this fat for a well-toned abs and another dozen centimeters, though. But beggars can't be choosers, I suppose. I may not look like a stereotypical villain as one would expect me to, but that isn't much of an issue. I'd rather not draw any unwanted attention. And who knows, maybe it's more embarrassing to be killed by someone who looks like a chubby 12-year-old kid rather than a 2-meter-tall orc on steroids. Now, it works for me. And that's all that matters in the end. I choose to play as a halfling for the same reason I decided to play as a thief lord, to maximize my efficiency and performance. The devil is in the details, and I can't hope to become the best player out there if I don't play the game by the numbers. Halflings give a decent boost to my class core stats, and I like to believe that I'm smart enough to build the strongest possible character in this game. My future depends on it after all. Speaking of my dreams, it's been a while since I checked my progress over the last week. I bring up my status page, opting to leave out several of the less interesting options on the list. Status. Name, Ryan Orn Stabberton, Class Thief Lord, Trap Maker. Race, Halfling, Level 11. Health, 170. Mana, 540. Experience, 200 out of 2,100. Renown, not applicable. Attributes. Strength, 5. 5 minus 10%. Endurance 17, 5 plus 12. Agility 10, 5 plus 6 minus 10 percent. Dexterity 37, 5 plus 6 plus 35 divided by 75 percent. Perception 5. Intelligence 54, 5 plus 62 divided by 75 percent. Wisdom 6, 5 plus 1. Charisma 65, 28 plus 31 plus 10 percent. Luck 35, 24 plus 8 plus 10 percent. Unassigned attribute points, zero. Unassigned skill points, zero. My character has sure come along nicely, if I may say so myself. It's virtually unheard of to be able to reach level 11 in this game after only a week, but it's not impossible. I may have a good portion of luck on my way there when I am, but I still give my most credit to my own hard work. My stats are coming along splendidly, and it only can go up from here. My first order of business should therefore be to try and get myself some new equipment. While the gear I'm currently wearing is no means weak, 
I have to admit that I have already outgrown them by a wide margin. While I still wouldn't go as far as calling my equipment bad, I have to admit that I could do leagues better at my level. Getting an upgrade isn't paramount to my success as the power of my skills will only weaken without a proper equipment. A Thief Lord is essentially a minion-based support class, and all of my skills and abilities are tailored towards buffing and supporting my own underlings. I can buff them in pretty much every conceivable way, and I've done my utmost to further enhance my chances of success by discarding my personal offensive capabilities in favor of a more utility. Besides being a supporting class, I am also a magician specialized in illusion magic as well as a trap maker. These two utility-focused skill paths are the gems of my grand strategy, and I am mighty proud of what I have accomplished so far with these sets of skills. I can't even start to count how many times these skills have saved my life, more so than any amount of martial arts could ever could. I'm a commander, not a warrior. My skills should reflect that. I lightly shake my head to gather my thoughts. I may have just gained a small respite in my quest for the top, but I am not quite out of the woods yet. There are still loads of things to do, and I can't do them while sitting coped up in my hideout all day. Today is Saturday, so I am expecting there to be a lot more players online than usual. This shouldn't cause too much of a problem, as this means that most players will team up with their friends and go on long adventures deep into the wild. Who would want to stick around in a boring city on a Saturday morning? I sure as hell wouldn't. My main goals for the immediate future is to fully solidify my position and keep gaining experience. I am not sure how dangerous the sewers are at the moment, but I should probably lay low for a while until the heat dies us down. Perhaps this is a good time for me to head out into the forest and pick up my leftover stash of items from the days that I played as a necromancer. No. As tempting as that would be, I don't think I can waste the time or manpower to take that task yet. Hopefully the stash isn't getting pillaged by any time soon, and there aren't really any items in the stash that I'm desperate in need of. I would love to have additional funds and skill books, but so far I can manage without. My immediate concern should, therefore, probably be to perform my jobs to hopefully collect some gear or ingredients. My poisoner is starting to run low in regions, and I've already outleveled most of the poisons that she can make now anyway. With my mind made up, I head out of my office to see if my agents have returned. The main hall of my hideout is looking quite lively, with my underlings parting as the only NPCs could. Mugs of ale and roasted chicken legs flow abundant, and only their raucous cheers can trump the deliciousness of their food. I spot Cobra sitting at the main table, playing around the cards with my two cutthroats. I'm about to make my way over when an unexpected message pops into my box. Gregorius Iyengard writes, Hey Rhinon, I have a proposition for you. Can we meet? Ah, frick. They know. End of chapter. And that, my friends, concludes this match video. If you enjoy the story, please don't forget to go and show the author some support. And if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below. The easiest way to support this channel would be to subscribe and share as much as possible to help this channel grow. And I'll see you all in the next video, and until then I hope you all keep well and safe. Cheers.